Hey folks, Keith McGowan here. I am the Outboard Dad here to help you have a better boating experience. Today we got this Evinrude XP. We just get the lower unit all sealed up. We have our bucket filling up with water here. I still have the ears on it as well because I want it submerged. It'll be a little quieter around the neighborhood, but also I want that back pressure on it. And we're gonna do some diagnostics. We already know that we have two low cylinders and Zach says it really doesn't idle well at all. Are we gonna be able to get that idle better? I don't know, but we're certainly gonna try for Zach. Don't forget my used outboard motor buying guides for sale on Amazon right now for $20. Keep in mind, it is not an in-depth guide. Basic grab and go to hit the high points that most people miss when they're going to buy a used outboard motor or a boat with an outboard motor. This can save you thousands. And if you send me proof of purchase at Keith at OutboardDad.com, I will send you I will offer you a free half hour session over the phone for a boat or a motor you're purchasing or maybe a motor that you're working on for a limited time. It's a $250 value and it's for a limited time now. So while we're filling up our barrel, we'll go ahead and take our cover off. And I think I'm going to go ahead and take my air box off because I want to see what's going on in those carbs when we fire it up. So you guys know I love these old two strokes, but sometimes it's time to move on we'll see i mean are we really going to rebuild a 1988 motor mm. now, this is probably one of the cleanest old motors you'll find fresh water use don't know the hours Oh, no bolt in there. Little oil in the bottom, nothing major. Very clean inside. We're just going to go ahead and fire it up. Our tank is almost full. As soon as it's full, we'll fire it up and we'll see what it sounds like and what it does. Squeeze up our squeeze ball. I hear it squirting into the carbs. We can give it a little squirt. I can hear the primer. There's a little primer lever, lever here. Make sure that that works. Do that again. All right, let's fire it up and see what it does. So this has a little lever on it to give me a little bit of fuel to start up. A little flooded, I think. Is it in gear? Shouldn't be. Pumping water nice. I want to shift it just to make sure. Yeah, we're shifting. So of course that idle's good here. Seems to be pumping water nicely. So when I pulled the spark plugs and did another compression check just to show, just to see where my baseline was, I know that my two starboard lower cylinders were at 80 PSI and the rest of the cylinders were at 90. I had one upper port cylinder that was actually at 95. 
So we know we have some, you know, off compression there. And I'm also seeing a lot of smoke, not too much out of the ordinary, but I know he's adding oil to his fuel as well as a precautionary measure. Maybe it's a little bit much because when I pulled the spark plugs out, they were, you know, black as could be. So I'm thinking maybe he maybe he'll run a little ring free through this or stop putting oil in his fuel tank unless he's mixing it and eliminated the VRO. But the VRO still seems to be connected. So I'll talk to him about that. But it's sitting here running. Let's let it warm up for a little while and then we'll go off and on after it gets nice and warm and see what it does. <clears throat> okay, after running for maybe 20 minutes, got it nice and warm. I don't have any alarms going off. Just feeling to the touch. I do have an infrared. I could check the temperature just to be sure, but I don't have any alarms going off. I did pull a wire off and touch it to ground to test, it, test to make sure the alarm works. So it did start to idle down, idle down. Now the tachometer isn't working. Uh, I'm not, not sure why. I'm not going to go crazy into that because this motor is on its way out. So I did increase the timing a little bit and also the throttle a little bit. Now at the same time, now I could get my timing light and, and get a little picky with it, but with two low cylinders, I think we're just gonna have them get it out there. You can hear how it's running now. <clears throat> Actually pretty smooth for a two stroke that has low compression on a couple cylinders. Um, and these motors, you know, they can you can keep them going. So I think you should get it out and run it and uh, be sure that everything does what it needs to do from here. So Zach looks like you're ready to go. And um, you know, we'll go through. I did see a missing bolt on the back uh, plate that holds the exhaust plate on. I think there might have been like a little clip on there at one point, but that is missing. So uh, what I'll do is I'll get a bolt for that, put that in there. It's not leaking, thank God, but I don't want it to start leaking any water or anything through those water jackets, so we'll get that on there. So please like, subscribe, send me any comments that you have, and let me know what you think about this Crossflow 1988 150XP Evinrude engine. Have a great day. Okay, upon further inspection, I'm not gonna get that close to it with my camera, but um, found out that I shut it off, started back up again, shut it off. Each time I shut it off, that lower carburetor is overflowing. So that needs to be rebuilt. So it looks like we're gonna go ahead and uh, pull these carbs apart. Maybe it's just dirt inside there. We'll probably need to rebuild the kits. So that's what we'll do next. I'll get a hold of Zach, make sure he's up for that, and we'll take it from there. Have a great day. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and send me those comments. Take care.